Hi, welcome to my video on OpenStack where I show you a demonstration of the OpenStack system through its Horizon dashboard as well as take you through a little bit of the OpenStack project and how it is composed from a project point of view. So let's start with the OpenStack project first. OpenStack is a wonderful collection of tool sets that work together to create a immensely powerful and extensible infrastructure as a service platform. There's lots of information on the OpenStack.org website, but a key graphic over here is where it shows all the main services available from an OpenStack point of view. And I'm going to show you some of these today in a live demonstration. We're going to talk about OpenStack Neutron, which is the networking layer that I'm going to show you. We are going to talk about the Cinder Block Store, where we attach volumes onto our virtual machines. We create our virtual machines using the Nova um, compute layer and I'm going to show you the OpenStack Horizon web front end. There's loads of other components in here like heat for orchestration, uh, lots of other projects for monitoring, for uh, connecting to the system running, network functions, virtualization, a whole lot of uh, technology. But let me show you what the, the actual OpenStack environment looks like. This OpenStack platform that we that we connecting to today is publicly accessible in South Africa it's called Wingu and uh, it is built on Ubuntu OpenStack so let me connect you into the OpenStack Horizon dashboard and the first thing that we can see here is that I've con connected to an absolute blank or empty virtual data center um, I'm cons not consuming any instances I'm not consuming any virtual CPUs any RAM floating IP addresses. There is one security group configured over here. That is the system-wide default group for this particular OpenStack deployment, which is an egress rule, which basically says that all traffic from a virtual machine is allowed out onto the internet and a matching inbound connection will be allowed onto the system. I can also see on the network site when I look at the network topology that the data center is empty the only thing that we can see over here if I toggle the label is the public internet network that is configured so as part of the configuration to create virtual infrastructure I'm going to create some networking and some routing over here and, and some some routers over here in order to get our infrastructure up what we can also create or the way we're going to create it is we're going to create some networks onto the network I'm going to attach a router and then I have the option when I create a couple of virtual machines to create a load balancer and to add the virtual machine to that load balanced instance. We also have the option of adding a network level firewall into the system which sits in front of all our virtual machines. On the compute side, I'm going to create a new virtual instance, show you how the, the workflow is for creating that. I'm going to create a volume that we create that we attach that instance as a separate disk drive. I'm going to show you the images that we have available to boot the system from. And over here, I'm going to show you some of the key features for access and security. So the first section that we have over here is security groups. So think of security groups as firewalls that we deploy in front of our virtual machines. So for the demonstration today, I'm going to show you the creation of a virtual machine running an Apache web server that will be publicly accessible from the internet. So in order to do that, I need to create a security group with a couple of ports open. So I'm going to call this demo ports as my name of my security group. And I'm going to put a description over here to say a collection of ports. And I'm going to create the security group. The security group is a collection of rules. Um, we can either put one rule per group, or what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to put a couple of rules inside one security group. And the rules I want to add in here, in addition to the standard egress rules that we have, are a bunch of rules to allow web traffic, SSH, and ping. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an ICMP rule in the ingress direction, so towards my virtual machine, from any address on the internet, so that we can ping this particular virtual machine once I've created it. I'm going to add that. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some web ports 
or uh, HTTP ports uh, to this particular group of, um, of, of ports. And again, I'm allowing HTTP traffic from any address in the world onto this virtual machine, since it is going to be a web server. And then finally, for administration purposes, in order to install the software, I want to SSH into this particular device. So I'm going to add an SSH rule, again, from anywhere on the internet, because I don't know what my external IP address is, uh, just so I can reach this virtual machine. So once I've done this, I now have a collection of firewall rules effectively to allow me to ping this virtual machine, connect to it via SSH, and access it web, its web page via port 80. So now that I've created that, let's have a look at what else we do over here on the access and security side. Over here we can create key pairs. We do everything with uh, key-based key authentication in the system. I've got a couple that I created previously. I'm going to use this Wingo 2 one today for demonstration purposes. I can also see a list of floating IP addresses uh, over here. Currently there is none. So in order for my um, system to be accessible from the internet, it needs a public IP address. So later on in the demo, I'm going to show you where we allocate those, those addresses. And then finally over here, we have the APIs that we publish for the system. So there's computer, network, and volume, and imaging, and metering APIs, all publicly accessible so that you can connect via code to the platform and make it uh, do things that you that you want to orchestrate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some network infrastructure for me to, to connect a virtual machine to. And the first step is to create a network in the environment. So I'm going to create a network called Demo. I'm going to set the admin state for the network as up because I want this network to be to be accessible. I'm going to give a subnet name over here of demo as well. And then I need to give an address range for this uh, network. So I'm going to choose a well-known internal address range um, that is non-publicly routable. I'm going to select IPv4 as my um, IP protocol. And because I want this machine to go out onto the internet, I'm going to specify a gateway IP address over here. Finally, inside the subnet, I need to do a little bit of configuration. I'm going to enable DHCP so that when my new instances are created, they automatically get an IP address from the system. You can disable this and, and set some allocation pools uh, over here. I'm just going to leave the default turned on. I want to get my virtual machine to get out onto the internet. So I'm going to add a DNA server over here. I'm going to cheat and use Google's just so that I can do name resolution from my virtual machine to get um, out into the internet. And I'm going to create my, my network. Everything that we do in OpenStack is software defined. So this is a software defined network. It's an overlay that runs on top of the physical network infrastructure. In order to now connect this demo network to the internet, I need to create a router. For the router, I'm going to use the, the network name demo. Again, I'm going to set the admin status up. And for the external network, the internet network, I'm going to select the public network that we have configured in the Wingu environment. And I'm going to create that, uh, that router. Once the router is created, I need to connect the router to the demo network um, just to complete this uh, path. To do that, I'm going to add an interface onto the router. I'm going to select the subnet, so I want to connect this demo subnet uh, LAN. I'm going to put in the IP address that I specified earlier as the default gateway on the system. And I'm going to submit that. And once this is completed, I will now have a complete networking chain where I've got a private network that is connected to a router that is connected to the public internet. So I've got a complete path here for how to get back and forth onto the internet on my network. The next step for me is to create a virtual machine that I attach onto this, uh, onto this network. But I'm going to do that. I can do it from here by clicking the launch instance button. But I'm going to do it from over here on the dashboard so that you can see some more options uh, when we create the virtual machine. 
So I'm going to keep the launch button from here. I'm going to create a virtual machine called Demo. I'm going to stick with my naming convention over here. We have two availability zones configured in this particular OpenStack deployment that we run. Um, you can see the OpenStack environment is located in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I'm going to select any availability zone to let the scheduler decide what is the best zone to place the virtual machine in. The next step I need to take is to decide what is going to be my boot source for this virtual machine. I have a couple of options over here uh, where I can boot from images, snapshots, volumes or volume snapshots. For today I'm going to select a disk image and this is a list of operating systems that we have images for on our OpenStack environment. This includes some popular open source systems and some Microsoft Windows platforms. I'm going to choose the Ubuntu 18.04 long-term support release uh, instance today. Once I hit the next button, I need to understand how much resources I want to allocate to this virtual machine. Now these flavors are configurable when you create your OpenStack environment. So for today I'm going to select something called Gen 1 Medium on our environment, which is a 2 virtual CPU, 4 gig RAM, 50 gig disk system. So I'm going to choose that. And you can see it sits over here, ready for me to deploy. For the next step, I'm going to select the network that I want to attach my virtual machine to. Since we only have one network, it automatically pre-selects the demo network. If I created more than one network, there would have been a list over here, and I would have been able to choose one or more networks uh, to connect my, my system to. The next step would be to, to connect a firewall or the security policies to my virtual machine. Now earlier we created this um, uh, security group called Demo Ports where we added in ping, SSH and IC and um, uh, an HTTP. So I'm just going to select that to allocate that to my virtual machine. On the key pair side I'm going to pre-select the key that I created earlier. We use the cloud init um, customization script so that we can instruct the virtual machines to do, perform certain actions on boot up. For today I'm not going to select anything over here. I'm simply going to move to the next step which is to show you that you can add metadata tags to your virtual machines um, tagging them as web servers, database servers or whatever it is that you want. And I'm going to launch this particular instance. So in the back end we are creating a virtual system that now has the correct resources allocated to it and is booted from this Ubuntu 18.04 system. And we can already see that the machine is busy spawning on the, uh, on the platform. Um, we can see the name that we've given this particular system, so there's some details we can view for this machine when we look at that. We can see the image that we're running for it. It's been allocated an IP address inside that demo range that we selected. The Gen 1 medium flavor has been selected, so two CPUs, four gigs of RAM and 50 gigs of disk. We're using the Wingu 2 key pair. The machine is active and it's been placed in availability zone 2 um, inside the compute environment. And the power status is that the machine is up and running. So at this point we have a functioning virtual machine. However, in order for us to connect to it, I want to access this machine from the internet. So I need to go and add a public internet address to make a mapping over here. To do that, I select from the drop-down list over here the associate floating IP address uh, option. You can see that there's various options over here to edit metadata, edit the instance. Uh, I can suspend it, I can resize it, make it bigger or smaller over here. Uh, I can edit the security groups. But what I'm interested in at the moment is this floating IP address button. Let me go and select that. So currently there is no floating or public IP addresses allocated to my project. So I'm quickly going to go and hit the button to add one. I want to have uh, an IP address allocated out of the public pool. We call this a floating IP address because it literally floats in and out of the pool. As long as you have it associated to your project, it stays there and it's yours to use with your virtual machine. If you no longer use it, you can release it and float it back into the public pool. So I'm going to allocate myself an IP address over here. 
and I've been allocated this .140 address and I'm going to associate that with this 0 0.3 IP that I have. So the moment I do this, I will now have a publicly a way to publicly address this virtual machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to test that the machine is live. So I'm going to go ping and I'm just going to take this IP address over here. I'm going to copy that and just inside the terminal window, paste this and make sure that we get a response from the virtual machine. And as you can see, this brand new credit virtual machine is up and running. I've got some good response time onto this, uh, onto this machine. The next step would be to say that we want to create a web server on this IP address for us to connect to. So in order to do that, I'm going to SSH into this machine using an interactive logon. I'm going to select the Wingu2 PEM file, which I just copied into this directory. Our default username for Ubuntu systems is Ubuntu. And I'm just going to paste in the IP address over here. And once I hit this, I will get a prompt to trust this fingerprint for SSH, which I will do. And I'm now successfully connected onto my virtual, onto my virtual machine. So the next step for me is just to quickly install the web server over here. So I'm going to do a quick sudo apt-get install Apache 2 just to get the web server up and running. Now, because we've created the, the security groups already for HTTP, we should be able to get to or point to this IP address and simply see a web server up and running as soon as this installation is completed. So I'm going to make sure that I copy this IP address and have that ready to go the moment the web server is configured and we can see that the process has, has completed. So I can go and click over here and just say paste and go and there we have an Ubuntu 2 default Apache page which means we've now created an OpenStack server, a virtual instance, set the security groups for it, built all the infrastructure necessary to maintain it, literally within the case of a couple of minutes to get this virtual machine up and running. The next thing I want to do is to create an additional volume for this virtual machine so that I can store a little bit more uh, than the 50 gigs that I, that I have by default. So I'm going to call this uh, demo again, sticking with the naming convention. I'm going to select a 100 gig disk over here in the Johannesburg zone. I'm going to create this volume. And as soon as this volume is created, I can go and edit the attachments to basically say where do I want to, onto which system I want to attach this, uh, this drive. So I'm going to select over here my demo instance. I'm going to do the volume attachment. And what we'll see is it'll attach the empty 100 gig disk to my virtual machine and it'll tell me what the drive mapping is for that machine. So because I'm using a Linux system, it sits on the VDB virtual disk B mapping inside my Linux, inside my Linux machine. If we now go back to access and security tab, we'll see that I have floating IP addresses assigned into, into my project which is allocated onto a machine. I can see the key pairs that we're using over here. I can see the APIs and I can see the security groups that we have uh, created and have allocated to, to the environment. Thank you very much. That is all for today. Thank you for watching uh, the video with me.